today's session is on charts. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about all the sessions we've been having, so I decided let's do something different. <laughs> so let's do charts. And uh, I'm going to be doing the old and the new. So they are the charts that we all have in our Excel, uh, regardless of version, as long as you don't have Excel 1997 or some really, you know, an Excel that someone who is already graduated university was not born when the version came out. As long as that's not the version you're using, then we are good. You know, you would have what I am calling the hold. So I'm going to demonstrate anyway, but just to show you what those I go to insert, go here, go to all charts. Okay, so I want to help you to see what I'm calling old, what I'm calling new, right? Uh, okay. Sorry, uh -huh. this is what I was looking for. So this is the, let's say this is the hold, right? So this is the old. And this, is the new. You'll be like, then what is this? <laughs> Anybody knows why I'm leaving this one out of the new and the old I'm talking about? So old is they being they are in everybody's version of Excel. New, you have to be in Excel 2016 and above for you to see this in yours. Combo. Why, why do you think I've left out the combo? Any Anyone want to take a guess? Any idea why you think I leave out, I left out the combo? It's deliberate, but I want to know if you, if you know why I left it out. You can type, you can unmute, you can speak. So nobody. You can type, why do you think I left out combo? Why didn't I, you know, maybe had it as old or had it as new? Why is it hanging? Anybody? Somebody? <laughs> Going? If nobody says anything, I'm not going to say anything. So then we will all not know, know it for sure, whether we know it or not. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Okay, my name is Samuel. Yes, thanks. Word of, of a man. Yeah, please, uh, I, uh, you I want to... Me from, you know me from Futa? Uh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because those okay. are the really very well up to that level. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's go. Okay. Um, I, I just noticed that I'm not seeing your screen. I think if you are seeing your screen, oh, um, maybe. it will help us also to know exactly what you are doing and okay. flow along with the training. Oh, thanks for even mentioning that. I thought my screen was visible. Uh, it, let's, actually, it looks visible on my hand, but let me just reset it and confirm it again. So I'm going to reset, stop sharing, start sharing, Start sharing. Okay. Is my screen yeah, visible now? It's visible now. Yes, it's visible now. Okay, good. So I was, um, let me redo what I was doing then. So, uh, so what I did was, for well, first of all, in case anyone is lost as to what is even the background to what I was asking. 
Today's topic is on charts, the old and the new. The old are the charts that everyone has in their Excel. As long as you are not using an Excel that only runs on, um, of, on, on Windows 99 and Windows XP, <laughs> in fact, Windows uh, 95. As long as you are pretty much everybody, the Excel you use will have the old, okay? Then there is the new. These are the charts that are only in Excel 2016 and uh, more recent versions. So I am now back here. Uh, back here. I'm showing us the charts and I'm asking that, OK, I picked this and said these are the old. So I marked this as the as the old. Right, and then I marked this as the new. And then I, I put a question mark around it and said, anybody has an idea why I'm not including this in either the hold or the new? Why am I not classifying it as any of those two? Any idea? You can also type it in the chat box. You can unmute and say, but I hope at least my screen is visible. So you've seen all what I've said. Okay, so we are back to what I said. If nobody says anything, I will just. I, I have no idea, actually. I have no idea. Okay. Okay, that's a fair answer. So the thing is, combo in itself is not a type of chat. I know it might sound debatable, right? But that's the stand I take. So combo is not a type of chart. Combo is it's combination of two different charts. Okay, so by the way, I made a mistake here. This is should be the old inclusive of the column chart. So combo is just a combination of uh, is a combination of two or more charts. So that's why it's not fair to say it is because you can combine some of the hold with the new. You can combine two holds. We usually use it for holds most of the time, but it's just by itself. It's not a chart type. It's you combining two different charts. Okay, so let's now dig in into what we have. I'm going to give share a link. That link is our manual. It's our curriculum <laughs> for today's session. So let me quickly grab for us the link. In fact, we'll be switching between the Excel and this particular that I'm sharing, this link I'm sharing. Okay, so I, I don't want to take a, an unstructured approach to teaching us charts. I want to take a bit more structure than what I even do in classes, because in classes, it's all practical. People don't expect me to use one hour to teach charts. Some, I've, I've had cases where people are angry that I spend so much time on charts and something. But then, you know, sometimes you, as a trainer, everything, looks important. <laughs> so today, nobody should be angry if I use a whole one hour on chat. You've, I've told you up front that today is all chat, okay? So let's start with uh, going after them one after the other. So in Excel, there are 16. Let me count again if I have not miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, wait, one, two, three. This is not the best way to count anyway. So. If you go in Excel, there are 16 charts. Let's count here. Okay, so counting. This is uh, control two. So this is one. This is two. This is three. This is four, this is five, this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There is one more that is hiding somewhere. It's actually hiding inside a um, scatter. I'll I'll take us to it anyway. Thirteen, fourteen. 15, 
16. Uh, one after the. So there's one here actually. So that means there should be 18. There's one more inside here. Inside this place. So I can see 17. I'll show you where, what that is. Then there should be one more. 18. Okay. Maybe this uh maybe they are 17 actually, right? Uh let me zoom out. Okay. So let's go after let's go at them one by one. Let's start with, uh, I have a practice file that will make me able to go a bit faster than, otherwise I will struggle to cover everything. So I have two actually, let me open the two. So what I will do is, I will share that link, I've shared it. Okay, so I'm going to be a bit so I don't make it look like I'm reading the textbook to us, right? I will mix them with my words. I will use what I normally use in explaining, which to me, I find that makes it easier for people to understand. There is no ambiguity. Then I bring you here for confirmation. So you, I'll just show you this to say, to confirm that what I've said is not just um, my own opinion. It's also how the manufacturer has designed it. Okay, so let's start with column chart. Let's go at it in the sequence that we have in this documentation here. So let's start with column chart. Column chart is the most used chart in Excel. And it's the most used because column chart is to show is to show data for different categories. So what do I mean by data for different categories? Anytime you have data where you are like, okay, I have different regions and I have some values in front of them. So I have a region one. Let me even use something that we all can be familiar with. South, East, maybe North, Central, Uh, and I want to show the figures for each region. These are different categories. Similar to if what I have are uh, different people. Michael, Kingle, Moke, Jide. You get the idea. These are different people. If I have figures in front, some figures here, and I want to plot, right? The moment that in my head I'm saying I'm plotting the value for different people, different regions, different brands, different categories, different categories, I bet you column chart is eligible because that's exactly what it, it depicts. Column chart by itself depicts that uh, I have different categories and I want to show how each category is doing stand alone. So each category is standing alone. Okay, see? So to plot the chart is not difficult. Just select the figures and go to insert menu, click on the chart, and boom, it comes out. Okay, so now that I've technically explained that column chart is to show everybody differently as see if they are different categories. And that is why it's the most used because most of the time you are plotting charts to indicate what has happened in different places, different to different people, to different department, to different cost center, to different products, to different, you get the idea, okay? So now when you have chosen to do a chart, as I have chosen to do a pie chart, what are the other options that I have about a chart? Every chart has what we call chart elements, chart elements. So chart elements are 
the things we can customize about the chat. So it is as if you have a house. Every one of us have a house or live in a house. You don't have to own the house anyway. Uh, but we know no, most houses are not equal. All houses are not equal. Let me use that word, right? Some people, their house can be a very minimal kind of house. Room, sitting, uh, kitchen, rooms, and you know, like what should be in every house anyway. Some people can be a lot more el elaborate in their own house. They could decide to have a, a swimming pool, a, a garage, a, you know, something a lot more exquisite. No, not that some other people will not have. So anyway, not to drag that uh, explanation too, for too long. This is what I mean. You want to add a swimming pool to your chat. Boom. One of these things can be like a swimming pool for your chat, right? But you notice that some defaults are already enabled. So those are like the things that are typically common across all chats. Aha, 19 chats in the document I sent. Thanks, sir. Okay, so 19 chats. So uh, this is what I mean by chat elements. You have chosen to build a house. You have chosen to build a house. It's not that you are building a road or a bridge, right? So you are choosing to do a chat and you are choosing to do a column chat. You know, whatever chat you are choosing to do, you will find out that there are things about it. Let's start going about the things one after the other. So axis, right? Let me turn it off so that you see what we go wrong or go off. Let me take this out of the way so that, uh, in fact, let me make this a bit bigger. So axis, uh, these are axis. You know, this is a vertical axis. This is the horizontal axis. If you don't know what has gone wrong that they are not showing, uh, just go to this place uh, and uh, you will find out that that's what has happened. Somebody or you are the somebody has mistakenly turned them off. Most of the time, they make sense to be there. You don't want a house, we don't want to have a house that does not have a kitchen. But then there can be some houses that it is deliberate that they do not have a kitchen, right? Maybe the kitchen is going to be shared with some other people, so the kitchen is separate. But what I'm just trying to say is that most of the times, this is something that you want because it's serving a very vital purpose, okay? The times I see people turn it off is if they want to do infographics. So if they want to do infographics, they turn it off, then you will do more design. You will start doing Corel Draw kind of stuff to now say, okay, this is it. This is Southwest, and you want it to blend in with something else, right? So I've seen cases where people turn it off, but not very frequently that you want it turned off. All right, so I go to the next one, which is the axis title. Now, uh, by the way, I mentioned this as vertical and horizontal. So axis title two, you have vertical, horizontal. It's not turned on by default. I guess a Microsoft thinks it's going to be like the chat becomes too crowded if they are turned on by default. So maybe that's why it's not turned on by default. But then there are some of us that might want to be a bit more academic about the chat and say, what if someone is asking me what are these numbers? You know, all this. so yeah, if you think it will add more value to your chat, I can say I want to turn on the vertical axis type too. And then I'm saying, okay, these are our revenue in a uh, million dollars. Million dollars okay so that is that okay and we move on to chat title that is self-explanatory your chat did not come up with a title no problem just come here and enable the title now the thing about the title is you can make it dynamic what do i mean by dynamic i can click on the title and do equal to on my keyboard now when i did equal to that equal to is not showing where you think it will show it is actually showing here Okay, so it's not an aberration. It's even what you want. Then I say it's equal to this, right? And from that moment onwards, it's going to be reflecting whatever is here. So imagine I have a drop down here where you're able to pick a, I don't know, pick something and the whole thing changes inclusive of the chart. Your title too will change, right? So this is something that I use sometimes in dashboards or in pivot table chart to make the chart title to change to what has been picked in the filter, you know? So 
uh, let's move on. Then the data level. Data level is another thing people like to have to their house that doesn't come by default. So when you build a chart, you like to have a data level. It might not be in all, but it's usually nice for some charts, especially if I'm going to put this on a PowerPoint, you know, it would be nice for them to see the actual value. Okay, so that is data level. Uh, let me take it off so that we don't have too much. So I go to data table. If you enable data table, uh, you will see that there's a table beneath your chart. And I bet you this table is looking a lot like uh, the table of my data, right? So the thing about the data table that is strategic for me is if I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation and I need to show both the figures and the charts, instead of having to copy this and copy this chart, I can just put in the data table and so that way I'm having both the table and the chart together in one visual and I'm putting it on the PowerPoint. And you know the nice thing, if I'm adjusting my PowerPoint to be bigger, it's also adjusting tandem. So I'm not going to be having too much of a headache adjusting chart, adjusting table separately, right? So that for me has been one strategic use. And um, error bars, you're going to laugh. What I'm going to say will make you laugh. <laughs> So error bars, can you see this? So you see, uh, these charts, uh, they are being inflated. There's hair, here, in here. There's, my wife is saying I call it hair. It's not hair, it's hair. Anyway, uh, there's hair in there that you see that's like a bicycle pump, you know? So that is like to ensure that the valve, is like a valve to ensure that the, 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 the bar does not deflate, right? So it's like a pump to keep it, uh, inflated so that's error bars okay so i hope you believe me uh grid lines <laughs> anyway that's a joke error bars they are very difficult to explain that's just the idea i want to put, uh, pass across so far in every all of my practical work i've never had to add an error bar the closest to me adding an error bar in a chat is when I was doing some academic work, like a, a master's program. I can't even remember the course, and I don't think I eventually did it, but I considered doing it. So because error bars are able to deplay, depict for you things like standard error, standard deviation, there are more options in case you want to knock yourself out and see all the things that are there. You see, you can say you want to do a fixed value and the rest. Maybe one day I'm going to search, I've searched before uh, to find out where someone has used error bars for something business related, something that, you know, my boss is not going to be like, what's this doing there? What's, what am I supposed to gain from this, right? Uh, or if anybody amongst us know a scenario where this makes sense, I'll be happy to know. So I won't be saying it's a bicycle pump to avoid the bar from deflating. Okay, so. Grid lines are these um, horizontal lines, okay? Uh, let me click on them so you see them. Some people don't like them. They say those who are very visually inclined, they don't usually like them. They like to do something else that involves removing these and putting their own colors. Uh, so again, it's left for you. For me, I'm not all that much of a design person. So if it's not looking bad, I leave it there. <laughs> so, uh, but that's grid lines. The other thing about grid lines is you can do more. And that's what me have had cases where I needed to do more, right? Do more means you can add a lot more than what was, what was originally um, shown there. So you'll be like, why would someone want to add more and make this look like this, huh? Well, welcome to the world of academia. There are some reports I'm doing that are like school project work that they will say we should go and plot a chart, plot a graph. So my, some of my colleagues will buy a graph book. Remember graph books, these are how they look like now. You know, all these lines are there in a graph book. So they will buy the graph book, they will plot the chart, they will now scan the answer, right? So because me, I know Excel, I don't have to go and buy a graph book and plot it. I just use Excel to do the graph book, which means I turn on all of these grid lines. And most of the time I'm doing it for a, a scatter where I'm plotting a, a chart that is like a line chart showing relationship between X and Y. 
Uh, so that's for me where I use it anyway. Uh, moving on. Legend. The legend of the seeker or legend of what now? So legend, I don't know if you remember your geography, especially if you're a Nigerian like me. I don't think you should forget it. I don't think I remember anything in geography, but I remember this one thing where, you know, you draw a, gra a map and you shoot, you shoot some places like dot, 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 dot. And another place will be like cross, 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 cross. Or oh, yeah, this like cross, right? And that place will be like like yeah, double crossing them, right? X X X X everywhere. And then you go to the to the right side and you create a legend or a key and say, okay, all you do a small rectangle and say all the things I like dot 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 dot. That is a um, Sahel savanna. All the ones that I did uh, cross 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 cross. They are Guinea savanna. And I don't know what the other ones we used to do. Anyway, uh, in Excel. It's the same way I always used to remember or explain legend uh, because, well, here it might not make sense, uh, but um, when you start having more records and you want your chart to capture, oh, let me drag this to the side. And plot my chart based on these ones. Yeah, this. Okay. Uh, let me pad these figures. They are looking too small. Okay, good. You see, this is legend. You see what I'm saying, right? It's like a key. It's not on the right as we used to do in geography, but you can always put it anywhere you like. In fact, I, I prefer it's here where it is right now and before if in excel 27 2007 and earlier it used to be on the right and it was not good because on the right means it will be squeezing space all of this space it's a squeezed it away from your chart so usually bottom and top are the preferred location so that you don't have your chart squeezed to one corner okay so that's legend. The more we go into some of the chat and when you get to Power BI, it makes a lot more sense because anywhere you see legend, you just know it deals with color and to show what it is that is being plotted on the chart. All right, so moving on, maybe I continue with this one. Trend lines. In fact, let me use this one. Let me drag this guy away. Trend lines. Uh, if you want to show a trend, across your data, then trend line. Uh, okay, but I don't think it will make sense in this one. Okay, so let me bring this guy back. It will make sense for this one, right? If I had a trend line here, for where, which one, for revenue or for expense? Let's say I'm doing for revenue, right? You see that because my data is over here, it's showing, okay, on average, this our revenue has been growing. It's like it's already calculating the average growth for our revenue for me. So sometimes this can help you to show a meaningful trend in your data that you have done a bar chart for. Okay, so now I've explained what I call the chart elements. Chart elements, like I told you, is how many rooms, what kind of rooms do you, what kind of um, stuff walking closet blah blah you have in your house you know you have in your chat some people we had some things some people we know had it's all the personal preference thing then now let's go to the type like now i've put i've chosen a column chart i've chosen to build a house and not a bridge right but then again am i building a duplex am i building a bungalow am i building a what other things huh so you get the idea uh, there's something that is like that. So when you pick your chart, just to show something about what I'm saying. So let's say this is our operations in Nigeria. These are operations in South Africa. Okay, so now when I'm plotting a chart, let me delete all this so that you don't get uh, distracted. When I'm plotting a chart, right? When I go to the chart that I want, Ah, uh, it's like, hey, give me a drink. The question is, what kind of drink? I want Coke. 
Cook Zero or Cook, uh, I don't know, Cook not, Cook, Cook, Cook or Cook Zero. So the same thing, I want a house. Oh, good. A bungalow or a duplex? This is what I'm calling a bungalow or a duplex. Do you want a clustered column? You want a stacked column or you want a 100% stacked column? And you know what? This thing I've said, if I go to a line chart, clustered, the cluster is silent. Eh? <laughs> like that movie, Django, the design. Here too, the cluster is silent, but it's clustered. Just trust me. Stacked, 100% stacked. So there are charts. Uh, let me look for another one. But anyway, you got the whole idea. So that option means the same thing. Once I explain it with this, you will get the understanding for anywhere you have to decide between those three. So let's start one after the other. I'm going to plot the clustered. I'll take it to one end, one corner of my Excel. Let me drag all these ones down. So this is the cluster. I'm going to call it cluster. Okay. I'm going to do another one. It's going to be the stacked. I'm going to do another one. Call it. Is the stacked? I chose stacked. Uh, so I chose the stacked option. Remember, I've shown you all those options. So stacked. This is the stacked. I'm going to pick. The third one, maybe I'll do this one slowly so that you see that I actually, this was the first one I picked. This is the second one I picked. Now I'm picking the third one. Okay, so now we have all three. And I can now explain to you what the difference between them all is. Let me turn off grid lines in my work good so things look a little neater hundred percent start all right so let's explain what you are seeing cluster everybody is plotted on their own dedicated bar so nigeria has its own bar south africa has its own bar for every year category so these are like breakdowns so you can say okay you know this every these are the major categories so every year is the major category and we have like a breakdown something that like okay this is what we did in one country this is what we did in the other country so this is clustered right then this is stacked stacked is okay for 2013 was what we did all together then now show me what came from nigeria what came from south africa right so they are stacked all these breakdowns are stacked to get me the total for the year and then i can be able to say this is how we did this year and this is what came from this country this is what came from the other country right so that is a um, stacked then let's go to the 100 percent stacked right 100 percent stacked is wait for it imagine what you are interested in is like a pie chart i want to see how much we did but then in this year we saw we did more in south africa than we did in no we did more in nigeria than we did in south africa right but what if i want to show for all of the years so if you try to do a pie chart for all of the years there's going to be wow. Well this is not looking like what I'm expecting, right? A pie chart cannot show for more than one one data series. That's the word, technical word to use, right? The moment I'm trying to do this breakdown, instead of just one year for multiple years, forget about a pie chart. Uh, you might be like, uh, let me try a donut. Uh, this is a donut, but then do you like what you see? I don't know if you like it, but this is not what I don't even know how to interpret this. Let's say I think I should switch row and column. Okay, this is looking a bit like it, but then I don't think this would be easy for anybody to interpret, right? Now, is this not what I want? Just take a look at it. Is this not doing what I want? 
This is not showing me for each year how many percentage we made for, from Nigeria, how many percentage we made from South Africa. You know, this is like the pie chart for many, many uh, categories that I'm looking for, right? So we use this a lot for when you want to show value share. If you contact Nielsen or any of these market research company, a lot of time, this is the kind of charts they are giving you and pie chart. So pie chart for one period, this one when they want to show you for multiple categories or periods. So they like the value share and all this volume share kind of uh, analysis. So what's the value share of revenue from the different countries? This, the moment anybody tells me that's what they want to see, boom, I go to using something like this. Okay, uh, that is column chart. In fact, I've talked about all of the things I want to say that are customizable about the charts. The other things that I'm not going to talk about them, but just mention or, or let you be aware is you can always tweak the the colors. You know, you can always say you want some colors that are different. You can come here and say you want to choose some unique style. So all these are colors. So I'm not a very good person with colors, so I'm not going to let me focus more on and I won't be able to even finish if I try to do that. So you can always and it's easy. Color is something that you can always know what will look good when you if you are not sure what will look good, try everything. Then the one that look good, you go and pick that one ultimately. OK, so you can always tweak everything about the color here, the shape field, the outline, the blah, blah. You can knock yourself out. So I'm going now to the other chart type, which again, I see I'm going to just point you here to see so that you will see what I'm saying. Can you see that column chart is to show categories, right? That's what I told us. So now let's go to line. Line chart is to show trend. A line chart is to show trend. Where, I see. Ideal for showing trends. Data over time. What do I mean? Cross. And what's the pigeon for if it's a lady? Guy is bros or lady, I don't know. Maybe it's a max or something. Anyway, if you select this and you go and pick line charts, uh, even if it looks like it's not, if it looks like something you can explain, uh, Madam, bros, please don't. Because, yeah, you might be able to explain it, but there is a better chart for it. This is not what naturally you should be using line chart for. Line chart, in fact, this looks like you have drawn a, I don't know, a road. You know, because are you saying the thing changed as it went from southwest to southeast? Did the value, did our revenue change as it? It's, it's someone can really decide to pick holes in this. And me, I'm even going to want to pick holes if I see this. I'm going to want to change it. You will not give us a project to do and I'll give you a chart that is like this. No way, because uh, I just know it's not the right thing, except if you deliberately, like it's very obvious that that's what you want and I can't argue with you, then I'll give it to you. You're the one paying anyway. But if I, have a, if I have a choice, this is not what I will do. Line charts are better for time data, things that are over time, over, in this case, years, could be months, could be. So that's what line is best suited for okay it's to show trend to show how things have been changing over time and all what i said exists for line too so you see it has all these things it has up and down bars i don't know what it is somebody has asked me i don't really know i, I think they had it not too long because it has never really been there i've been doing trainings for many years and i and i think it was on the last year or not too long ago i started noticing it so i have to go and read up on what it is so if you know you can mention. Uh, so this is line chart. So I'm not going to repeat all what I've said here. Equally to, I'm not going to repeat what I've said about these options. Clustered, stacked, and 100% um, stack is the same of everything I've said. Control C, Control V. So I move on to the next chart. The key thing is 
understanding that line is for train, okay? And uh, pi and do not. Okay, pi and do not, meet pi and do not. Unfortunately, the pi doesn't have the shape of meet pi. So I want to show the contribution of revenue across these our two, two subsidiaries. Pie chart. So nobody is confused about pie charts. Now the confusion, the things about pie charts are not about how you do it, but about when not to do it. So let me quickly take us to this documentation. I think they did a very nice listing of what you should be aware of. Ah, uh, so when you should do pie charts, or let me say the way I like to say, when you should not do pie charts. If your data has more than one data series, I already explained that to you. When we picked all those multiple years, right? Pie chart did not pop out anything meaningful, okay? So you can only do it for one series, like one breakdown, okay? Uh -huh. If your data have negative values, bros, madam, leave pie chart alone. Pie chart is going to give you a wrong interpretation when your some of your values are negative okay and this one you can see microsoft is being a uh, political with their whoever wrote this is being political with it words and almost none of the values in your data are zero values anyway i can use a simpler english see when you have zeros in your data they're not going to pop up in your pie charts so it can be really difficult for people using your chart to understand that they are not looking at eight categories. Your business does not just sell six products. Maybe your business sells 10 products, but just because four products do not have values, they are not popping up in the chart. So people are beginning to think, maybe you only sell four products and six products. You know, that's the kind of um, confusion that can come because when there is zero, then it's not going to pop up at all. And then someone might be thinking maybe the ones popping up are the only things that exist, right? So you want to be careful about that. Uh, this one, uh, I don't think this, this is where maybe they should have put the probability around because uh, there's no, there's no rule that says it must be seven or below. You can do it for nine, you can, the key thing that Microsoft is saying is Microsoft uses a, a color template that when the when the categories are seven, it will have used all the color teams. After that, it keeps it now starts repeating the color schemes on a different um uh what's the word they call it now? You know there is a um, bright there is a um, blue and light blue. So it will have used blue, then when your stuff is more than seven, you start using light blue, a different shade, a uh, shade of the different of the same colors. So, but the key thing is, you are the ultimate judge. When you do your own pie chart, eh, and you look at it, does it look like crowded, like someone can make sense of some of, of or pick out some of the, the fields, the categories in your data? If you think it's looking difficult to pick out, expand it a bit, expand it some more, expand it to where you think is reasonable limits of expansion, and if it's showing clear, then great, leave it. Even if you have 10 or 12 uh, categories there, as long as they are showing well, bros, leave them, okay? But then, if they are not showing well, then you don't have to use a pie chart. Just think of something else. The problem is just that at that range, at that stage, to some, there will be very few something else to use because column two might start looking crowded. So most of the times, when we are doing analysis to put on a chart, you want to look for a big bucket. Or should I say, you want to look for very few big buckets. So instead of doing chart and saying a chart of all of our 36 states in Nigeria and their population, you will do it, the chart will plot, but I bet you nobody will want to take through, go through the pain of figuring out where Ogun is or where Lagos is, because everything will be really mushed together, right? So that problem is a problem that is peculiar to all charts. So most times you will want to now say, okay, maybe, I'm going to break it down to region or I don't know. You'll find out something that will work better for you. So that's pie charts, right? 
point chart. Line chart, I've done line chart, point chart. Um, bar chart, uh, let me just use the same data so that the frame of reference stays the same. You see what we did for column chart, right? If what I pick is a bar chart, they are always together now in this version of Excel, right? Uh, just like you took your picture and you turn it like this. <laughs> so it's a design thing. Technically, wherever one will work, the other will work. But people say design-wise that when you have more than, when you have a, a fairly large categories, that it's easier for people to, for you to expand and it's easier for people to read this way than when you expand and they have to be scrolling sideways to go and see the other ones. So what I mean is, people, is this is slightly better, even though I'm scrolling, you know, is this slightly better than if it was a column charts? That's what Okay, suddenly the column is even looking better. That's why I say, well, there's no, it's just all the design. When it comes to design, everybody can be right and wrong at the same time. So I'm moving on to the next chart type. Uh, okay, do not. It's like, it's like the meat pie we just finished eating. Anyway. A, it's like the pie charts. So it's like a pie chart that the inside, so call it ring. Microsoft likes to call it ring. So if you check this documentation, they keep using the word ring, ring. It shows data in a ring. You know, up until I read this documentation, I never thought of it as ring. I like, do not know, right? But anyway, it's very much like pie charts. It's only, do you like your own pie charts to have a, a, an empty hole in the middle? Or you like it to look like this? And I showed you pie chart can actually do that in um, multiple. Can do multiple this, right? But it might not be easy to read. Even for me, I'm finding it difficult to read. But it can. Pie chart cannot. Okay, so I move on to area chart. Area. So area chart is like line charts. When I say it's like line chart, also in definition is like line chart and in value, it's like line chart. It's like line chart with the bottom part shaded. So area chart, if I go to line, then this is area chart. Huh? So area chart. It's looking like um, topology or geographical something something anyway this is area chart right where do we use it you want to show the trend and emphasize that it was this big so maybe this is your investment the blue one is your investment in in bonds the the red one is your investment in cryptocurrency or in bitcoin and um, stocks so over time how have they been growing you know, so every time you look at your investment, you are seeing how it has been growing over time and which portion is the largest. So because it's shaded, it's a lot easier for you to understand that the blue one is the larger of your breakdown of asset allocation. So like that, some other people use it for, okay, we have two product lines or two, uh, yeah, product lines. This is what this one is contributing. This is what this other one is contributing to our entire bottom line. Clear? To do it is not difficult. It's just to understand that, well, that's where you want to use it. X and Y. So these are the charts that we have been plotting all throughout in our years. You primary school, secondary school, and if you, if you are quote unquote unfortunate to do science, you continue plotting it into your, into your university days, right? This is that chart. And like we say, uh, there's so much this 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 disconnect between what we do in school and what we do in real life. So we plot this one all throughout in school. Then we come out of school and we are plotting this other one. We are plotting a um, column and line chart. And it's not the same as line chart. Don't ever confuse the two, right? A, a, an area chart, a, a XY scatter chart is a relationship chart. 
showing relationship between that's why it's called x and y x value and y value right it's not a if you let me show you if i pick this and i pop it on the x and y graph right this is what you'll see ah huh? okay so it has nothing to do with line chart don't even think about calling it line chart even if you change the dot to a line let me go do that so if i go here and i change it to say the one that is looking like line ah huh? still it is not the line charts you just have to trust me on that one it's not a line chart uh let me see if i can make you know that it's not a line chart how do you interpret this okay good i'm going to change this one here right i'm going to make it really large let me be sure nothing is okay okay i'm going to make this one here very low i'm going to make it um, 50 million So I'm going to do something to this here, right? I'm going to change this to 2013, 2014. Okay, I think I'm just in setting trap for myself. It's beginning to look more like line. The more I'm trying to make it obvious that it's not a line chart. But anyway, just uh, know it's a relationship chart. I want to move on. Uh, I'm looking at my time. Okay. So it's a. If you need a line chart, go and do line charts. Don't go and do X and Y. Bubble charts is. I think I have a separate practice file that I can quickly use to demonstrate. Even that X and Y. Aha. Good. I was suffering unnecessarily before. So imagine this is the data you have, right? Aha, I want to show the relationship between um, GDP growth and unemployment. That's, those are the kind of things you use X and Y for. We are saying maybe this is your X value and this is your Y value. And so we are plotting what is the relationship between um, oil price and something that is important to us, maybe our revenue or I don't know, something that for you is important, right? So if you're in that kind of unit in your company, where you are you are allowed to go and look at what can affect your company from the outside, then you might want to use this to prove to the management that this is what you have found. You found a relationship between this and that, you know. You're looking like jellyfish. Let's just stick to the point. So uh, this is what we use X and Y for most of the time. Now, let's talk about bubble charts. Now, imagine that um, maybe this is like size. So bubble chart is this X and Y, right? But then allows you to capture a third component. Allows us to capture a third component. And guess what that third component is? It is the the size. The size. Uh, let me see what's been plotted here. One. So let me just change something here. So are you noticing something? We are in year 20. Let's say this is year 2021. I think they say all of us are unemployed in Nigeria currently, except the politicians. Okay, so you see it can capture the size. By the way, this might not be the best way to plot this chart, but I just wanted to show you that that's the thing about the the bubble, it can capture a third component, the size, the population, or the value of something else you want to reflect instead of it just being a dot. Stock charts. So this is one of those charts that people don't use. I've never used it, even though I understand it, I've never used it in my in my many few years of using Excel. 
many relative to some people, few relative to some people. So that's why I had to use many few years of using Excel. Uh, but then let us, in this case, not stress ourselves and just focus on the documentation. Uh, it allows you to capture, I don't know if you are, you are into Forex or into trading, even if it's Bitcoin you are trading. Just be careful if you are trading Bitcoin or crypto. Uh, or stocks you are into. So let me just pick something. Apologies for the noise. Uh, that's what happens on some weekends where everybody's around. And when I say everybody, people in other compounds and they are doing stuff that is okay. Let me switch this to candle so that you will see what I'm saying. Um, I want to change the chart type. Change it to candle. This is it. So this is that stock chart, right? So I know many people when they see this, oh, okay, uh, what was that stuff? MetaTrader, you know, what's all those things we we install? MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5. I can't forget they wiped my money. Two different years. So uh, this is it in Excel. If you must draw it in Excel, then this is what you will use. You use the stock chart. And it's a very rigid, uh, it requires you to follow some rigid stuff. If you want to plot that one we are looking at, then you must have a column for open, another column for high, another column for low, another column for close. So it works based on what you have in as columns. So if these are the only three columns you have, then this is what it will plot. If these are the columns you have, then it's going to plot the full one. And if you include volume, then it's going to plot something. I, I don't even know how to interpret it, but I don't think you will like it. So, but I think it's trying to indicate also the volume, but it will have been nicer if it was able to indicate it this way. Unfortunately, it can't do it this way. So it does it like something that is uh, as if the guy is taking it down. So you see here, it's like what you are seeing here, but then it's touching the uh, horizontal line, the horizontal axis. So that's what I would say about stock. Uh, moving on to surface. Surface too, I will just talk about it because uh, I plan to just touch it on the surface. Uh, I've never had to use it in a real world. Like when I say real world, business scenario. I've used it for somebody who was doing the master in something computational. And when I helped him with his first task, with his second task, when he called me again, I did not pick his call again because uh, I didn't enjoy the experience of having to. The chat is easy to do. It was for him. I had to do some things before I even get to this part. So I think it was something related to Johnny Man a random work something anyway it is usually used for all those kind of scientific something that is formula derived we want to show like a three-dimension um simulation of, of of an outcome you know something that can move up down and like another dimension so instead of using x and y you're using like a xyz so this is like the xyz chart right or it's called surface chart anyway so the, according to uh, Microsoft, it's for optimization. So you can go optimize yourself. Uh, move to the next chart, radar chart. Uh, unfortunately, the example they have used here does not do good justice to it. It's making it look like a satellite image. Like somebody is looking down on the hat from off and is mapping some places as this is where all the money are, or the rich countries are, this is where all the countries that think they are richer. These are the ones that are not rich at all. So uh, let me go to my own example. I have my own. I hope I have my own example of radar. Where I can cook up one. Let me just be sure I have. Hey, no problem, I'll cook up one. Because I think what it does is something that uh, it has practical value. It's just that the value you need to. Let me give you. Let me explain what I'm saying. Say that uh, we are in HR. So HR analytics, I think I, let me look at the meeting, people in the audience. Before some people will tell me to, do. let me just check. There are some people that I have to be careful what I'm saying right now. Okay, I can't find them here, good. So HR analytics, huh? So we are doing uh, employee uh, evaluation evaluation this score so the scores 
but then based on department, right? So finance department, uh, logistics department. Uh, let's even put the HR people too here. Yeah. Uh, one more sales people that are bringing the money. I think five would be good, right? Okay, four is okay. So let's say we are this evaluation now. Huh? It's it's been standardized that you will be on a on a scale of one to ten. So you are being evaluated in such a way that it translates to a score. So on in terms of um, all the employees in that department, right? So when we did okay, how are they doing in terms of um, let me just cook up some things, right? In terms of um, employee attendance, like timeliness, punctuality or timeliness to work. How are they doing in terms of um, technical competence? So when you rate all the staff in the companies, and you average for each department, which department is having too much of a gap, or which department is looking like everybody's perfect and okay, right? Timeliness, technical competence, uh, on some soft skill. Anyway, on some criteria three. I am growing tracing against time, so let's just use a and to fill the remaining so i'm going to okay so you see this type of stuff right how are you going to 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 do this. In fact, think about if you do a pie chart, if you do, there are so many things you can use, but I'm going to talk about radar. Radar chart is a nice to use and not just nice. Like when I explain it, you will find out that it might be natural to even use it here, right? So I call it a decision kind of chart. So people call it spider chart, but ultimately when you pick a radar chart, right? Let me even pick the one that has dots. And I pick this radar chart and I say, okay, can you see what has come up, right? So it's showing me that for every department, what is their, where are they on that spectrum, on that rating of zero to 10? You know, how are they performing? On timeliness, the yellow is doing better. Sales, uh, that's a lie. Sales people are not always very timely. Uh, if you have said finance, I will have agreed, or logistics people, but anyway, you get the idea. So it's saying in our company, it's the sales people that are always punctual that are always timely to, to work. Then on technical competence, say the logistics people, they don't have too much technical gap. When all the managers rated all the people under them, they gave them high scores for technical competence. On criteria four, sales. Uh, on criteria three, sales. Criteria four, finance guys, maybe budget now, nah, how to cut costs. Maybe you can give down to finance. Maybe that was the criteria five. Four, criteria five, HR. That would be police, how to police others. But anyway, the key thing is that if you do this for something that is important to you, you have surveyed, you've carried out survey, there are people to rate you on a scale of one to five, and you want to show. So as I'm doing a training here, another of my colleagues is doing a, a training. Four of us are doing trainings in different places. We now want to evaluate how the people rate us, right? So this would be like Michael, maybe I'm the one in blue. Maybe Jide is the one in, uh, I don't know what color is this. That color, this orange, are you orange? Then uh, let me use a lady. Kemi is the one in the gray. Uh, this is yellow shade or amber. Then um, who else now? Oh, I'm not. Emeka is the one in amber, right? So instantly you'll be able to see. Oh, Michael is the one they gave the most rating in this. GD is the one they gave the most rating in that. Who is boy? Is the person that is own is really tiny in the whole context, right? So this can help me show that it might be 
at first it might not come easy for the people in the audience, but once I start explaining, they will get it. So that's the thing. So you might be there to ex you might have to be there to explain. But then it's worth it. It's worth the trouble. Uh, that is the radar chart. Three map. You can see the tree map, right? It's uh, to me. I like to compare with the column charts, right? I like to compare it with the column charts, right? Uh, let me drag all this one. Too. Column chart. Uh, I draw a column chart. This is a column chart. I draw a tree map. A tree map. Right? What's the advantage? A tree map always arranged in in hierarchical form, like in an order. In a column chart, it is the natural way they are showing. Southwest first, southeast next, north central. For tree map, tree map no. The biggest first, even if the biggest is not the first on the list, right? And this one can be really nice for where you have a lot of, like even that you might still be able to use it for 36 states where you cannot use this one. So this can be really accommodative of many, many categories, right? And more importantly, because it helps you to emphasize the bigger, the biggest ones. So you might even find out that people will not even com complain that it's, it's a, it's a crowded because they are seeing the major categories ahead, you know. So that's one thing I found useful about tree map and looks nice too and it's very flexible, especially when you are space conscious. You know, you might you can say you want your own to be very slim. So it adjusts. This one if I make it too slim, well it will look like <laughs> it will look like the slimmer version of me anyway. You see I'm slimmer and you know so you don't want to do some things to this guy that you can do to this guy. So some of those can be an advantage that makes me go for for the three map. Sun burst. I like this chart. I use it sometimes to wow people, right? So let me wow you. Uh, so say. This is managed by Michael. Then this is managed by, let me get somebody's name here. This is managed by, I can see, let's say page. Okay, great. So this is the manager. Uh, you will like some busts. I don't even need to compare something else. When I do it, you will know that you will like it. If I go here and I pick some busts, boom. Can you see what it's doing? Michael, this is me. Then it explodes it into all the, you know. So this is me and the guys I, I cover, the branches I cover. This is Kweju and the branches she cover, right? Great. So if they, if you can, it's, it's a, Hierarchical, but also can 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 break down. Like, uh, let me just say, drill down. So it kind of explodes the thing. Maybe that's why they call it sun burst, inner core, something called outer core of the sun. Blah blah. You get the idea. I need to move on. So, uh, and they even did something nice. It's looking like a fish. This is the tail. This is the mouth. is about to swallow your senior food. But anyway, you got the one I said. The one I did is enough. Uh, histogram, right? Histogram, I have it here. Histogram. Let me even throw away this one that I have. So imagine we are all, we all work in the same company, and these are our names, these are our age, right? Uh, how can I easily show what our age distribution is? Are we an old company or a young company, right? Or more importantly. If you are doing some kind of a market basket analysis or some things that to get insights, that's what we use this one for. You know, I'm doing employee profile. How many years have our staff stayed with us? Are most of our staff stayed with us four years or two years or 10 years? 
or you know, so all those kind of stuff. I just come select that number of years or age or you know what I've said. I go to histogram and I pick histogram. You can customize it data, but let's just focus on the key thing. So this is helping us to see that most of our staff are in their twenties, right? Some staff are what? Some staff are two years old. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you do fictitious data, fictitious things to happen. So, but then you get the idea. So I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm racing against. Uh, maybe I should just stop here, sir. Okay, I will not go to Excel again. Box and whisker. It's a statistician's chart. It's to show what we call central uh, measure, measure of the... Uh, ah, man, I've forgotten all those things they teach us in statistics again. All those things where we are calculating the mean, the median, the the upper and middle are good. I think they even write it here. See? So it shows you the the upper range, lower range, the mean, the median. So I think it's measures of central tendency. That's what we call them. Let me just type it down. Uh -huh. My head is still there. I think that's it, right? Uh -huh. All this kind of mean, medium, mode, blah. So it doesn't show all of them, but it shows most of them. So if that's what is interested, interesting to you without liar, then that's what you use. Waterfall. Waterfall is an accountant's chart. Why I say an accountant's chart is if you're an accountant and you are not, you don't have to do waterfall or you are, you are not doing waterfall at all. Uh, your Excel expertise is not complete. Though. So waterfall allows us to capture movements in things anyway, it could be cash, could be assets, could be in evaluation of something, retain anything, what have you that can change over time. So what was our asset at the beginning of the year, asset at the end of the year? Which ones did we keep buying? When did we dispose of assets? And then if you take out the depreciation to blah, blah. Anyway, how did we arrive at where we are? Okay, so that's what this one does. So how do we do it? Are we ready? I'm going to just copy this guy and this guy. Go somewhere, nobody will disturb me. Put them, go to insert, go to waterfall. waterfall. Pick waterfall. Okay, so it is looking like it, but it did not get it completely correct. So what do I do? Uh, let's even say I take out all these busy numbers. What do I say? I say, please, I right click on this guy. I say, this guy, only him. I right click. I say, this set as total. I go and pick this guy again and say, set this guy as total. And voila, our food has set. So that is a waterfall. Uh, I'm racing against time. Uh, funnel charts. Funnel chart is a nice, it's good for those of us in sales or where you need to pre-qualify sales, you need to do some kind of conversion estimation. Oh, I'm into multi-level marketing. I'm into all those things where I need to go and recruit people before I will make the money. And then I'm saying the thing is profitable. Well, I believe it's profitable, but it's not profitable until I get other people just to worry me anyway but let's say i'm that's the kind of business i'm into right so i talk to 1000 people i talk to 1000 people let's go talk to 1000 people so i talk to 1000 people ah uh, out of that 1000 people uh some are concrete head like me they are not interested some are reasonable and interested 800 are interested, right? Now, that interested is good. They need to come for our demo session where we we gather, before I gather people, some other team gather, we go and put them in one expensive hotel or one high-class hotel, be sure that, you know, somewhere. We show them images of cars, of, 
of trip to Bahamas, of trip to the moon and all of those places. So many people might say they will come to the demo session, but out of that 1,000, only 400 eventually came to the session. Now in that demo session, after we have tried to brainwash you with all those uh, very, you know, flashy cars, testimonials, images, Lamborghini cars that I only see in photos, I don't see them in real life. And then I'm just suddenly saying I'm going to own them and then you search a yacht that is golden, golden color and maybe it's made of gold. Anyway, how many people commit? So how many people eventually fill the form to say they are signing up and they're going to make payments? Let's say the conversion can be really high because they can almost literally force you to do it. Then how many people eventually, you know, pay, which is become your converts. It's almost like I'm doing evangelism. So maybe eventually it's 200, right? So if I know I have target, if I know that for every convert, the average value is a, a 100,000 error. So if I know that my target is to hit um, 10 million error, right? Then I need to get times, I need to get 10 converts. So I need to at least know my conversion funnel. Go here. That funnel used to be tricky to find for me almost already. Uh -huh. nah, today was not tricky. So see, so when I'm presenting to the team, maybe I have a small team that works under me. I'm able to show them, hey guys, uh, this is how our funnel is like. We, we need to get one person, we need to talk to five people. You can see we talk to 1,000 people, only 200 combats. So please, every day you go out, if you are talking to someone, the person is proving difficult, that's not the end of it. Leave him. Don't waste your time on him. Go to somebody else. Just make sure you talk to 20 people, you know, blah, blah. So anyway, it begins to drive. Instead of me saying it with my mouth, I'm putting this very big on a, on a, on a projector, and I'm telling them I can even go and color them differently. I can say this is when we are talking to them. So they are really green. You know, we are talking to the green guys. They are green. They don't yet know about us or blah, blah. Then this is when they you get your idea. And then this is when they become gold. They have converted, they are now gold. So we want to make everybody gold. Or anyway, you've gotten what I'm trying to say. Combo chat is not a chat type, so I'm not going to call it a chat type. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate a situation where it might make sense to do a combo chat. So let me take this one. Close your eyes so that you will not have seen this chat. Then I can talk from scratch. You can open your eyes now. So I have data that is like this. Uh, again, our company revenue growth, and then um, I want to show. Maybe I'm, I'm. I need to show to our investors. I need to show to some people we are responsible to, and show them what is happening, and hopefully uh, let them be happy with us, right? So I go to insert, right? Instead of me to be doing, saying all of this on one chart, right? Where growth doesn't show, right? I might need to do all of this on two different charts, right? So that I'm doing this growth here, and I'm doing, I'm doing the, sorry, revenue in one, and I'm doing the growth in another. Uh, I think that growth line will make better sense. Uh, but now, uh, if I'm doing a presentation, I put this one on slide one, I put this on slide two, it's not nice. So I will show you the growth, then I will now go to slide two and show you the growth. No, I show you the absolute value, then I go to slide two and show you the growth. Then I flip back here and say, you know, for you, actually, even though the growth has slowed down, our revenue has grown up really. Like, is it not better to put them right on top of one another? Huh? What do you think? Is it not better? I think yes, it is. It should be right on top like this, but uh, without doing a Photoshop, let me just do it with a chart in Excel called Combo Charts. Combo Charts. Come here. Well, it's not a chart. It's is a combination of charts. <laughs> so combo charts, I go here, let me zoom my screen, 
And then I'm able to say, I want this one to be, in fact, it has helped me. I want this one to be clustered, this one to be line. But this line is not going to show. This 10%, 20%, 30%, we're not showing a scale of millions. So I'll say plot it on a secondary axis. And put this south. And we are done. Okay, so thank you very, very much. Uh, a lot of people even stayed this long with me. Thanks a lot. Uh, any question? Uh, thanks for the for blowing me the hats. Hey, applause. Uh, my head is swelling. Thanks a lot. So any question from anybody before we kind of wrap it off? I know I spent too much time in some aspect, but I did it the natural way. I used chat. So I focused more on the one that um, I use and what I how I use them. Yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Cinema. Yes, I see your hand is up. Yes, sir. Carry can on. you hear me? Thank you. Yes, I Thank can. you very much as always. Um, I had those two questions. The uh, first one is uh, in regards to the axis. And on the axis part of it, there are times when we use scale. So I want to know at what point do you make use of that scale? Because when you click the plug sign, sometimes it takes you to um, those lines. I don't know if you understand me, or maybe I'm not making myself clear. Okay, let me show. Let me show what I think you are directing me to, and you tell me if that's where you you had in mind. So if I go here, is this what you are saying? Is it this part? Unfortunately, I've just lost your screen, but you can go ahead, sir. No problem. I will understand. You can't see my screen. I just lost it, but no problem. I only explaining. I uh, can get it. Okay. What about like this? Is it back? Oh no, not at this point. <laughs> just go ahead, sir. No, no, I will cancel the screen share and I will share again. So it doesn't take me any time. To share again. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing the screen again. Let me know if. You can see my screen. Great, 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 great. Thank you. Is it this thing on my right? Uh, let me it let me just do it again so that you will see what I'm saying. Let me cancel this. Let me in fact delete all these guys so that uh -huh. so no distractions. Let me put this really big so it covers up enough space. So I'm saying, is this, this is what I, I think, but like, am I right? Am I thinking in the direction of what you are trying to say? All these options that are showing ability for me to set, should it be a scale of 50 and 100 or should it be in, is this what you are saying? Exactly, you are correct, sir. Okay. Uh, like when I usually don't come here to adjust things because uh, by default, they are set to auto. That's Microsoft Excel auto set it kind of do it in a way that it thinks is makes sense for the amount of data. And the advantage of the auto is that when values change, it's also automatically reset. So instead of me now uh, setting it and then I set it to max of 10,000. And one day we get a value that is 12,000. That 12,000 we know show, or it will make it look as if it's still 10,000 because it is now higher than the scale you have manually set. So most times I don't touch it, but then that doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't. So the parts sometimes that I see that I might need to touch might be if somebody says, it doesn't want me to do this in um, gaps of 1,000, 1,000 each. Maybe it wants it to be in gaps of 2,000. So that gaps part, that gaps is um, in bounds of, where is it? Uh, it's called units, all these major and minor. So I can say, okay, instead of two, two, uh, one, one thousand, this person wants it to be in, in um, gaps of 5,000. Are you noticing that my scale has adjusted? So this part, I know I change it based on maybe what somebody says or who I am working for. So this one is the part I know that, okay, uh, a lot of times, I, not a lot, sometimes I come here to change. But that one of the maximum and the minimum, I don't usually touch them. 
So it's usually all these um, ones of in what gaps of what that's the one I go to touch. Uh, I don't know if I've managed to Thank address. You. Okay, you're welcome. Sir. Any Thank other you. question? Okay, you said second question is not is not related to the session. Yes, sir. You can ask the question, sir. Okay, sir. Um, the question I've been trying to ask you since last week. Um, I, I, I don't have those dynamic functions, so I wanted to know how can I download them? I've tried on my uh, magic way to see if I can have those uh, for, uh, unique functions and the filter functions being downloaded through those uh, add-ins. Fortunately, I cannot handle it. So I don't know if there is a link that can be of help, sir. Ah, Masa. It's not going to be what you like, most likely. So the thing is, it doesn't come as an adding. It is tied to the version. So if you are on your Excel, then eh, just check. But if the annoying thing or the part that makes it a bit sad is most times the check is what you have done. Because that's how I quickly check. If I type the formula and I don't see it, then I know I'm not on the version that we have it. So but just to show you the types of version that normally we have it. So if I go to file and I go to account, okay, uh, if you see my screen, right, mine is showing Microsoft 365. Yes. Well, if yours is even showing Office 365, as long as there's 365 in yours, in the name that is showing, then you will have it or you are supposed to have it, right? So in your case that you do not have it now, if you now want to have it, uh, one quick way is to just install any 365 version of Office, you know. Okay. 365 Office 365. We call it the day when we call them Office 365 or Microsoft. It's the same thing we are talking about. It's just last year they changed the name from Office to Microsoft 365. So that is one way. The other way is you install Excel. Now that one too is really funny. They are supposed to install. I think technically you should be installing Excel 2019. Which I have at the moment, but I don't, I don't know why it's not. The current one I'm using is 2019. Uh, 20, yeah, 2019. Uh, how did you see that it's 2019? You know, it will write it somewhere. It exactly, it. sir. And you wrote just it like 2019. You, yeah, just like, you, just like you just um opened your account here. Mine is showing 2019. It's a new one, actually. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. You see where this about is? Yes, please. Okay. Ah, uh, good. This about is where you will actually know whether it's 2019 or not. But then I want to say, I hope you see this is my about Excel. If you look in front, it writes version 2105 in my own. Yes, sir. I hope that's not the part you are looking at. Not really. Where I'm looking at is actually at the 365 Apps Enterprise subscription product for that. Uh, then you should have it. Something is wrong. You should have it. Uh, just check for update then. Let's just say maybe you click on this update and try update now. Okay, you see, my, when I open it, that actually is 219. 219 MX0 on the about version 2130 sorry guys for taking those other people's time anyway okay me i can help out uh after then okay sir reach me apologies but now that i know what the issue is me myself i'll i'll try to reach you so just i will just tomorrow i will be grateful sir okay. thanks sir so, sorry for bothering me so much yes sir no 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 team the partner customer all of that but thanks a lot and to everybody thanks for being a part of today's session and uh, just a small advert uh if you need trainings in excel financial modeling and power bi we are your go-to persons and uh, we have classes always every almost every month all those classes are running every month the class is running anyway and um, Importantly, if you want to reach us, let me just copy paste our details here so that it's easy for you to reach us.
And so we have Power BI again after this. But we have done it in the morning. So if you are part of in the or noon, you are part of the one we did in the noon. You are part of the one we did at noon. And you don't need to come back. Or if you missed it, I pasted it, not pasted it. But if you missed it, then you can rejoin at 6 p.m. to be part of it. Let me show you what we did today. I even need to download the video. Well, I'm not downloading the video of the session. So today we did court analysis and um, the the presenter was all the way from Australia. That was why we had to do it at 12 noon because it was nine o'clock already for him. So I'm just going to give you the event page. Let me just give you the link for you to join at 6 p.m. That's better so that you don't sweat looking for what link. So I'm going to post the link for you to join at 6 p.m. so that you can watch the session he had. It was, it was really, really different from the other ones we've been having, it was something about quote analysis, user anal analysis, and you mentioned some concepts that many of us would like to be able to apply in our other work. So thank you and have a nice week ahead. Happy Workers Day. Bye. Thanks, Mr. MVP, MVP Ayodeji. Thanks for joining, sir. Bye.